while back in the Nintendo Power Retrospectives, I covered Dragon Quest IV for the NES. Prior to that, I had picked up the DS version of the game, and I've been playing it off and on. I've now beaten the game, and I want to give my quick thoughts. Being that I still do not have a 3DS that has, or DS or 3DS that has the ability to capture a video for it, and also because I'm playing it on my commute, this is going to be more vlog style. Dragon Quest IV, as far as this series goes, comes closest to what we associate with some of the middle Final Fantasy titles, like IV, a massive party, multiple vehicles that you use to get access to other areas of the map over the course of the game, each which allows you to reach certain areas that you couldn't reach beforehand, and as your array of vehicles improves, they will allow you to access some of the same areas as before, but with different options and different ways to get to where you want to go. Now, for those unfamiliar with this game, and or if you didn't see the episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives where I covered the NES version, the story of Dragon Quest IV goes through five different chapters, hence the subtitle Chapters of the Chosen, each focusing on an individual character or a small party of three, telling their story and building up the larger narrative before the sixth and final chapter has the characters joining together to form a larger party and going on to take out the main final boss and save the world. Now, the DS version has some quality of life improvements from the NES game. In addition to a quick save option, your attacks are retargeted when the enemy you originally intended to attack is slain. The game also has more animated sprites for your opponents, with more expression and detail to their movements than even the Super Famicom Dragon Quest titles had. Additionally, several of the bosses in the game have some real scope to their size, due to the fact that the DS can showcase not only larger animated sprites, but can also showcase poly polygonal graphics as needed, which the game takes full advantage of. Now again, this is a DS version I played, and I did kind of wish that, since I was playing this on the 3DS, there was a 3DS version of this, because some of this stuff could have been neat in 3D. That said, there were some a few quality of life improvements from later titles, but this game really could have used, and would certainly provided more opportunities to develop the character of your party members. In particular, later games gave you the opportunity to talk to your party members, get a reminder of where you need to go to proceed in the quest, thus giving you something after you've set the game down for a little bit to remind you, okay, this is where I was, since we don't have an in-game quest log, and here's where I need to go to get there. And it, with this dialogue, it would be done by the characters, and thus you'd be getting some of the voice of these characters in there. For example, in Dragon Quest VIII for the PS2 and now 3DS, you would have Yangus, who would be top, would provide this information using his Cockney accent, or faux Cockney accent, that sort of thing. This is especially an issue with, again, longer JRPGs on handhelds, as there is always the possibility that you as a player will end up having to take a significant break from the game. Thus, it's important to get a fresher of where you are and what you need to do when you restart the game. So, either having something like a quest log to remind you, here are the things I'm working on, and here's what I need to do to do them, or being able to talk to your party members as a reminder. The game also includes some post-game content, including some additional dungeons, and the ability to recruit the game's antagonist as a party member, which is a nice touch. All in all, Dragon Quest IV Chronicles of the Chosen, or Chapters of the Chosen, rather, is a solid Dragon Quest title and a really good place to come in on the series, with the exception of the first three titles in Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3. The series has never been particularly heavy on continuity, while later games will build off on each other, Dragon Quest V, for example, includes the celestial stuff from Dragon Quest IV, there is not the same direct continuity, same world thing going on between the games. Dragon Quest IV strikes a good balance in terms of gameplay options through the variety of party members that you can pick up over the tours of the game, but without adding a complex job or skill system, that you have to manage on top of that and possibly creating a situation where you can accidentally put together a bad build and screw yourself later on in the game. If you have a DS or 3DS, you can find a copy of this game. I definitely recommend that you pick this up.
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something particularly you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.